bit of a delivery. Um, it's not what it seems. <laughs> so the local, um, I suppose, auto spares dealer in Australia, Repco. Um, they had a sale on recently, so given that we're going to be doing some spray painting. Uh, yeah, we've gone and bought a few bits and bobs. So high build primer, which is good for uh, obviously filling in very minor scratches. It, it won't fill in dents and stuff, but it's, it's a good product for just taking the edge off. So we could use it for the badly scratched uh, silences. Um, what else? Uh, all my paint I don't bother with two pack. It's just uh, they call it one K, which is just uh, thinner than and the paint because um, two pack is pretty pretty dangerous, and I don't really have proper breathing equipment for it. Uh, so edge primer generally I'll buy edge always edge primer for bare metal. Um, it's ideal for very smooth surfaces and I think aluminium, it's a better bond. You can get away with just normal primer on bare steel, but there's no difference in price. So I always buy um, edge primer. Uh, acrylic la lacquer. So my color coats are usually uh, acrylic based. Uh, re the reason, the difference between enamel and acrylic is I think acrylic is uh, better for um, metallic top coats. So where you've got like a metal fleck flake in the in the in the color coat, um, it's better for acrylics. I don't think you can do enamel that way. Um, well, there isn't really much difference. I've tried enamel paint. It's no, it's not any harder than acrylic. So. The, the trick is you've got to keep everything the same. So acrylic uh, uh, paints and acrylic thinners. Um, I've used a lot of lacquer on motorcycle parts. So as it was on sale, I've got two tins. Um, now I'm experimenting with this. I don't know what this is like. Uh, subframe black, semi-gloss. Um, I'm going to experiment with that to see what the color and the finish is like again it, this was cheap it was 14 bucks uh you know that's like i could probably spray sp spray a whole um uh, motorcycle fairing and tanks and everything with this tin so it lasts a long time um yeah and so i'll see how that comes out it's epoxy semi-gloss epoxy so i'll, I'll um have a look and see how this goes um yeah, it, this one might need enamel thinners, which is a pain, but um, I'll try with acrylic uh, thinners and see how it works. Uh, more lacquer. Uh, what's this one? Another edge primer. Um, for the exhaust pipes, we've gone with the classic uh, high temperature um, spray paints um, even though I don't think it's going to get up to 550 degrees the only thing is I'm not quite sure this is a gloss black and it might look too shiny so we'll do a, a test coat on a piece of uh, scrap metal just to see what the finish is like because we don't want it like this you just want it almost like a satin so we'll see how that comes out and they've got this one as well uh, which is more, which I think is more of a uh, a flat, uh, almost like pro um, not primer, but uh, what's the word? A non gloss, I suppose. I don't know if this is satin. We want something between sort of that and this gloss. So I don't know if it's going to work. We'll um, we'll put again. We'll do a quick spray spray test on some scrap. See if it works. Good old uh, Armour All Protectant. Uh, great for plastics. Um, this is just bring brings up makes bikes motorcycle plastics look great um, you know any of that black stuff we in Australia we get a lot of UV damage and the, the, all our plastic almost turns like a frosty white 
Uh, this is great, it restores it and makes it look like brand new. You, the only thing with this is you've got to keep reapplying it every time you wash the bike. Yeah, that's about it. Um, oh yeah, I've got some more thinners. So again, acrylic thinners. Um, so with the sub subframe paint, it should really use enamel, but hey, let's have an experiment. And this was on sale. Good old fast orange hand cleaner. So uh, nothing exciting there, but um, yeah, good clean your hands after a day in the workshop. Cool. Um, I wasn't quite happy with the. Um, I was just using normal sandpaper. Uh, quite coarse sandpaper just to get the shape right um, but then I left it <laughs> I left it for a week or two and it's amazing the where all these little pits are chips and things where the corrosion is the rust had already begin to get in there again even though we put rust converter on there so it might be a bit of a problem this um, or it might be just because I didn't get a primer on quick enough so um, I'm going to do it tomorrow. Um, so I thought, well, I'll just go over it again to get the pits, the the pitting down. The like basically lots of tiny, feels like little needles sticking up. And I thought I'd just go over and feather in the the um, body filler. You can see that it's nicely transitioning from the metal to the the body filler. Maybe there it's a little bit. Uh, you'll get an edge you'll feel i can't feel an edge but i reckon the paint will gloss will show it up this is the thing it's quite hard until you get a gloss coat on to find out where all the defects are and we're trying to get a perfect round circle um so even though you know you look at it oh, it looks quite round it's amazing um the tips of your fingers are very sensitive and if you you know you run your fingers over and to me it just feels a little bit out of round there. It feels, you know, a little bit flat in the middle. Um, so it's quite a good thing just to run your fingers over. And you can feel like, uh, you know, bad transitions from the body filler to the metal. But, I mean, this has been so bashed about. Maybe we're chasing something that we can't achieve. Uh, but anyway, it's a good, good, uh, good thing to practice on. I mean what you do here experimenting maybe you could fix a, a dent in a petrol tank or something like that something a bit more something that has to be really um precise so yeah i basically went over um what was it with 240 wet and dry first it's mainly concentrated on knocking down the, the jaggy edges on the on the metal work with the 240 and then the 600 grade wet and dry just to feather try and feather, feather in the body filler the thing is when you when you're sanding the, the problem is you tend to flatten out and then you know your fingers aren't very good and you're tending to flatten out the hill where we're trying to keep that high in the middle and you know feather it off but uh, we'll see how the proof will be when we get primer on if it's really bad primer will show it up but sometimes primer being flat won't show it up and then when we put the gloss on or the clear coat that's when it really will stand out. I mean, we could cheat. I mean, I don't want to focus on the bottom because you're not really going to see it. You're not going to see the rear, which is the rear. That's the rear. Yeah, that's the rear. So we only want to focus on this bit here. When you're looking at it from above, are you going to see, you know, wavy lines all the way along and look stupid? But uh, we'll see. Um, so yeah, I've done the other one, which you know, it's pretty much the same. Again, you can see, because we've got a crazy dent here, how the metal, the shape of the metal is following the contour. So hopefully that to me looks like a bit of a high spot, but we'll see. Oh, one other thing, when we normally, when we prime, you should really flatten it off again with, I think it's um, 1200 grit. Let's say it's saying 120, but. 1200 or 1200 grit uh, you flattened off um, and that gives a you know knocks all the high and lows because the paint will follow the curve so if we've got a like here got a bad 
pitting, the paint will follow the pitting mark. So when we sand it off, we could, we can get rid of all these little lows and highs. Anyway, that's the theory. So we'll try that. Yep, so now I've sort of sanded it back. I'm going to put um, rust converter back on, give it a good clean, let it dry overnight, and then we'll spray this tomorrow with primer. Let that go off for 24 hours, flatten it off. And if it looks okay, then we'll put uh, the silver and then the clear coat. So these are uh, a couple of test pieces I made. Uh, just some scrap gal and didn't even prime them. Uh, and I bought these two sample spray cans. So they're high temperature uh, enamel, typical stuff, VHT. And another one is uh, Duplicolor. Um, doesn't really say um, what the oh, it says on the back here. So this one says gloss black. On the front, there's nothing to indicate though. It just says, you know, drive train paint chemical resistant coating. And then the other one just says black as well. Um, I mean, the, the, the tops here, obviously, this looks to be a matte. Anyway, it's always best is to do a spray paint. So this is the uh, gloss black. And in fact, it's, it's, I was a bit worried. When you spray this on, it is super, super shiny. Um, but I really wanted a satin, so not full gloss. And it, this is actually not bad. It's sort of got a satin feel to it. It's not like mirror gloss. Um, so you can just see the reflection of the lights there. Uh, all I did was just wipe it down with a bit of enamel thinners and in fact enamel thinners are not very good because it seems to, unless it completely dries out, it creates a bit of gassing or they call it bubbles, air bubbles. You can see just there, these are air bubbles. Um, it's better to use a grease, wax and grease remover. I think it's less volatile. But anyway, this is a test beat just to get the idea. Um, so it's pretty good. The other one, though, which I thought when I sprayed it on would be the one, but once it dries, it's incredibly um, flat. Um, there's no gloss at all, and the texture is quite um, sort of um, coarse, so it's going to pick up a lot of dirt and be difficult to clean. I mean, this would be okay for maybe um, exhaust pipes on cars where you don't see it, but... Um, no, I'm not going to use this. Uh, it's not a winner. So I think we'll just stick with this. Um, it's quite nice. When I did read the can though, most of these paints normally just go straight on. In fact, this one it says something like, um, you know, you can clean off all grease, remove all rust and dust. Um, ideally, it says then to prime. Um, it says shake canvas for one minute, blah, blah, blah. What does it say? For 10 seconds, for maximum adhesion and colour consistency, we recommend applying engine enamel. So I think you can get away with not using enamel, but um, primer, sorry. Um, but I, I do like primer because it definitely makes paint bond much better. Um, so yeah, I've, I've bought some matching primer. It's uh, $15, so it's quite relatively cheap and that's more than enough for really uh, uh, the two exhaust pipes so that's the plan we'll stick a bit of primer on let that go off overnight and then we can uh, put the black on the next day cool hey let's chuck some uh, chuck some paint on this so I did a little bit of a spray yesterday because these flanges move around. Um, so I just sprayed the end up um, in primer and, and put the top coat on. Um, let that dry overnight. So now I've got the flange held in place. And I've got these, these basically hung up from the ceiling. Um, so I can spin them around as I spray. Makes things a bit easier. I've just given them a wipe, final wipe. I've got one over here. That's the other one. It's a bit difficult to film because it's a bit tight in here. So yeah, I'll um, put some primer on this one. 
swap over with this one and then we'll put some primer on the in so in the silences so let's see how it goes Well, we've sprayed up the uh, expansion chambers and um, I just sprayed up the cans for the first time. Uh, but unfortunately, we have a slight problem. So it looks all right on the bare metal surface, pretty good. But if you look closely where we have the body filler, We've got a paint reaction, which is annoying. If I zoom in a bit, you can see the transition between the body filler area and the, and the metal. Either there is some solvent still in there, like uh, maybe wax and grease remover, or um, I'm not quite sure, or even maybe the body filler itself is reacting for some reason it shouldn't do or I put on too thick a coat to begin with which is prob probably the reason why apparently you know looking at YouTube videos about spray painting they suggest you know a very light coat first almost like a dust coat leave it to fully dry another light dust coat pull it dry because if you put it on too thick I think at the beginning the top dries out of the of the spray paint whereas the underlying paint is still wet and it's still gassing off I think or something and yeah maybe that was the reason anyway the problem so what we have to do now is sadly um, we've got to flatten this all off because it's not going to go away uh, and then do it all again <laughs> which is a pain but I suppose you live and learn you learn on little, little projects like this help you on bigger maybe on bigger projects i don't know apart from that i mean in general i mean primer is good in that it uh it's quite flat so it hides a lot of mistakes when you put the gloss on it then it shows up if we've got major defects so um so what i mean by that is where you get sh shadow line so Oh, this so that's the that's how it's going to sit on the motorbike so this is the the edge that we will see I think that's right isn't it? no it's that way because that's the weld line so that will sit on the inside of the bike so we're on the outside and it's a bit difficult to see because we've got to flatten off those edges but if you would see a a dark edge somewhere I can't find anywhere maybe it's all right <laughs> maybe it's just that annoying paint reaction but I haven't been set right there it's a shadow line difficult to get it because it's such a curvy surface anyway we might have got away with it but uh, sometimes I have to refill dents and stuff because they still show up as a dent so let's flatten this off. Flatten it off, I mean wet and dry. Take it back almost um, to the to, to the metal again, unfortunately. We'll try and leave a bit of primer on because that's helping to maybe seal whatever's behind. Um, if we take it all the way back, get rid of all the primer, we might just bring out what was ever behind.
if you see what I mean. Well, this is a lot better. Um, we didn't get the reaction this time, um, which is good. I don't know. I think what it was, I put too heavy a coat on the primer coat, the first flash coat, whatever they call it. Um, so I went very light. Um, also, I think temperature might have been a problem. I mean, it was probably only about 18 degrees in where I was spraying, so I put a small uh, heater in there just to warm it up. Um, so this time it's got on a, gone on a lot better. Um, yeah, so hopefully, um, you know, we've got some improvement. Uh, I also put a, I've, I used a high build primer, so that's why the, the undercoats, the, the, I used edge primer on the bottom, did a couple of coats of that, and then I put a couple of coats of um, high build on the top. High build, I think, is it doesn't fill in dents or, or defects. It, it, it does fill in some really tiny imperfections, like you might have a pinhole or something like that, I think. Um, so you can see there, these are the, are the spot weld marks are showing through. This is the bottom edge, and there's the weld line. There is a, a small uh, dent or crease uh, which I'm not going to bother with because it's going to be upside down um, that's how you're gonna that's, a, that's the, is that the no it's this way isn't it <laughs> so that's how you're gonna look at it from the bike um, maybe you can just see there like a shadow line just um, ideally you would maybe want to fill that over again Bit of craggy. These these were so dinged up. I'm I'm happy with just to to get rid of the major imperfections. So what we'll do is we we'll give this a light sanding with uh, 1200 grit paper, just to get rid of that sort of slightly dusty feel, um, knock off any high spots, and then we'll whack on some colour and see how bad it looks. Like I say, primer hides a lot of defects, um, so we we'll, won't know until we put the gloss coat on if it's a real a wreck so yeah we'll see how we go well that's it for painting for a while I think I'm quite pleased with this and um, the pipes came up quite nice so all that gouging and scratching has sort of disappeared I mean we've got a tiny if you get the light right you can see that's where that dent was I think but the 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 scratches where it went down the road, they're, they're all gone. Um, it's difficult to see. Um, yeah, so, I mean, the way you'll view this is from, more from above, I suppose. So even that, so that's, that came out really well, actually. That's a good paint, recommend it. Um, we've still got some pitting, you can see, on the top there, but, um, yeah, I mean, Craig is giving its age. It's not going to be spotless, but um, hopefully the rust won't come back. So there are the pipes, expansion chambers. The um, the ends came up quite nice. Um, got rid of most of the the dents and scratches uh, that were in there. Same for that one. So that's as it go that way. Yeah. So we put a big dent in the top of that. If I get the light just right, you, I think you can. See see where it was just there in the middle but um that's yeah, fine i'm quite pleased and then finally the the silences they came up with treat um so it was a bit of uh, paint i got left over from uh the x up i was doing so it's a not bad match um yeah so they're, they're uh, very good i think so um, what I'll do now is uh, let these go off nice and hard, leave them for a couple of weeks before sort of um, playing around them too much. I might just um, do a quick video and we'll put the silence, the uh, insulation wrap, well it's not wrap, silencer um, vibe glass on this, that's just arrived. So I'll do a quick update, that's pretty straightforward, just wrap it up to that sort of diameter and we'll put some wire on and 
they're good to go so next thing is <laughs> onto the wheels so they're next they're going to be painted red as a reminder this is the silencer with the big dent before the repair and here it is finished nice and shiny and glossy dents gone looks quite acceptable and this was the other one really badly scratched almost worn thin on the edge there and yep that came up quite passable so it's amazing what you can get away with with body filler and a bit of paint <laughs> 